All right, so why don't we get into some Loki, just the series predictions, Marvel predictions. So one of the things I had here was TVA, good or bad. I had Tony Stark. <clears throat> I think he's going to come back in a few years. Oh, and do you think this Loki is good or evil? So I think this Loki... Okay. But yeah, why don't we start um, there? I, I... So for me, I was thinking that the Loki that we know that Thanos killed, that Loki ended up being good in the end, right? But the Loki that yeah, we think... now have in our current timeline, he never had that arc where he's going to become good. Mm -hmm. So I think yeah. if it's quote-unquote destined for Loki to be good in the end, I think he's going to make the right decision. But right now, the decision he's making is based on his own <coughs> self-interest, which is in line with the Loki after Avengers that we know. Yeah, I think... Um... In, in in the spirit of debate, I'm, I think he's gonna pull the rug out from under us, okay, and be a baddie at the end. Okay. Um, my initial thought is that you know I think he's gonna be that he's gonna be an anti-hero and he's gonna be like the yeah. they're gonna lean they're not gonna commit to the will he won't he but right. for the but I've decided I think he's gonna be evil because you know it'll just like it'll it'll get people to want to watch more of it. Like, oh shit! Like it's gonna get people to want to see Loki again. For me, um, I don't so. know if that would make me want to watch it again, though, because I feel like it's kind of one of those things like you're one you're big on this where it's like after we've earned something, you rip it from us. So I feel like we've earned the concept that Loki grew as a character. And now that that's stripped from us, which is rightfully so, and it's in line with the story, I don't love the idea that Marvel can just be like, hey, after this character's had this whole arc, you can just throw him back which comes into my second prediction that i think in i don't know five ten years tony stark is going to come back as and have his logan moment and oh, fuck. i feel like you would hate that because you're like well it it takes away from you know the emotion of him dying but i'm like yeah i don't really know if it does because i think after some time has passed if they need this super genius or <clears throat> because they are kind of alluded to it as well, where I don't know who it was. It was someone not on earth. They were like, Oh yeah, we know about Tony Stark. And he, they're like, yeah, he's one of the most brilliant minds in the universe. And I thought that was an interesting line. I think it happened in infinity war and in game. I can't remember, but it was, um, it was, it was, what's his name? Yeah. Thanos says, right. Uh, he knows Stark, and he's like, "You're not the only one cursed with knowledge." Right. Um, right. Exactly. Yeah. So I think I think that has less to do with. Uh, actually, no, let me. I, I guess my my counter belief. I agree with what you say. Mm -hmm. After watching Endgame and Infinity War again, I'm like, "Holy fuck!" Marvel needs Iron Man back because Robert Downey Jr. His charisma is just fucking insane. Awesome. His like comedic timing is perfect. I laugh at everything he says, yeah. like especially towards the tail end of. Uh, the MCU. It has to be earned, but, though. They can't just do it. It has to be like exactly. in my fantasy that's, world. That's the issue I have. In my fantasy world, his daughter becomes um, Iron. Ah, what's the? I can't remember the name. It's like the female Iron. Let me Iron look, look. Let me look it up. Female Iron Man. Yeah. I don't want to botch this. Ironheart. Ironheart. Thank you. Yeah. So she becomes Ironheart, even though Ironheart is black, I think, but. <laughs> but I think she could become Ironheart and then all of a sudden she needs her dad and he like somehow comes back, gives him a hug and we're like, what? Like we weren't expecting it at all. I don't know. Like I want, if I, if Iron Man's going to come back, I want it as cheesy as possible where we're like in the, Did you just say we had to earn it. <laughs> no, well you can still earn it and have it cheesy where it's like, oh, like, oh, he's hugging his daughter. Like, or like, are you like, he's hugging Tom Holland or something like that. I don't know, man. Like I want it to be, I want it to not cheesy in the sense where it's like a bad product. I just mean like I want it to be like, oh my god, I can't believe it. Dodie's back. You know? Yeah, I don't know, like I don't know, it's a thing. I want him back and I think that's why it's best that he doesn't come back. Oh, whoa. whoa. Because You're like boring. his character No, I'm not boring. You know, I'm willing to sacrifice, you know, my joy for the betterment of a story. Oh, I think folks, that uh, <laughs> make sure you invite Matt to a party. Jesus. I am pretty good at parties, I'll tell you that much. But um <laughs> no, I think um I'm just with him, I think that his arc, the way that he, he completed his arc, mm -hmm. starting as a selfish person who like, you know, only wanted to like do things for glitz and glam and have fun, and then, you know, 
understood the responsibility of like what he did in his father's business, but then still being selfish and self-driven, yeah. eventually getting to that point in which he, you know, was willing to make that ultimate sacrifice. Like even watching Endgame again, you see that where he's like, I can't give up. He was like, I got too much to lose now once the five years pass and he has, he has, you realize he has a kid. Yeah. And then for him to step up to that plate and make that sacrifice, you know, for that to, I think a different version of Iron Man would have to come back. No, yeah, the, well, that's what I It, it, couldn't, what I it meant. couldn't be the same tone. No, yeah, time. that's what I meant. It but, wouldn't be the same, Jesus. <laughs> um, th- yeah, that would be awful. If it, if it was the same Iron Man, it would def- that would, that would sh- completely rip out the entire end game, like, feeling you had. I was thinking more like, an alternate Tony Stark that's older, has gray hair, maybe not the same universe, oh, but yeah. like kind of, because if you listen in Dr. Strange says, Tony, there's only one way, but that means that there's a bunch of other versions of him that didn't die where they got close or he grows old and Thanos rules this world or whatever. So there's Possibly. all these different versions of it, but I don't, but ultimately I think he can't come back within like five years. It's gotta be like, it's gotta be really like after Endgame, maybe the yeah. ten year anniversary. I don't know. Like, it's gotta be really yeah. unexpected because it is nice to see. Sometimes we were talking about reboots a lot the other day on Tea Time, and it is t- reboots if they're done in a way where they don't just sit completely on nostalgia, and it allows these new characters yeah. to still be the main honchos. It can work when mm-hmm. you give them those cameos and moments, in my opinion, at least. Yeah. And to that quick point, I will say that similar to this, I think in Loki, we're going to see Captain America return, but as an alternate version, an evil version. What? What do you think that? Yep. Um, Because uh, years ago, there was that crazy comic that came out where like Captain America was like a Hydra agent or something. Mm -hmm. And then they like fixed that. It was some weird convoluted plot. But I think that's like one of those big stories that they might like try and shoe in because we we got an alternate Loki. So like, what's the? There's definitely gonna be alternate other characters. I love that you. So it could be just fun. Like smite me for wanting to bring back Iron Man, and you're like Captain America. <laughs> but no, I think yeah, but it's it, but it's Hydra Captain America. That, that's not right. the same guy. Hello, He's Mr. Leah. Beanie. How are you? Um, you're kind of near our end of the show, but that's totally okay. Don't worry. We had fun today. We watched some watch parties, and we're talking little Loki before we head out. But you can check it out on YouTube. Yes, yes. Coming um, soon. And congratulations to you, Miss Talia. Um, her video is doing quite well on YouTube. Some of the iCarly stuff. Matt, yours as well. <coughs> so kudos. And the girls did really, really awesome the other day. They were that was a nice group. Oh, they were the fantastic. girls' room. So it was good. It was it was, it was amazing. But it was inspiring. What I was gonna say real quick is, well, Captain America did go back in time and ended up growing older. So who knows? Maybe they pull from that version. Maybe there's a different version that him that grew old and then went through Hydra. I don't know. But it, what do you? What are your thoughts? Like I know a lot of people got upset about how the Infinity Stones got reduced to like quote unquote nothing. Did that bother you at all? Like I don't know. No, I thought it made it more interesting. So did I. It's kind of crazy how this place exists outside of the the, the natural universe. Yeah. yeah. It just, it just makes it um, – it levels the playing field a little bit. And um, we get – I think we'll get to see what true power looks like at the hands of Lady Loki. Yeah, I think I think that it's important that we – so the end game in Infinity Wars was like here. If you're going to elevate it – so the – one quote my friend Corey said that was really uh, cool was he said – the fate of the world was online and in game, and now it's the fate of the universe. So, to me, the way that you show that is by showing, hey, remember those any Infinity Stones that you spent a decade worrying about, and like everyone got so invested in. This is minuscule in the world that we're now in, you know. And, yeah, and at the top, the time if time breaks, then fuck. right. And and to me, it's dead. like it's not that the quality of what happened was minuscule. It's just that there's bigger, bigger things out there you know it's it's exactly. here's a the, weird the, the, analogy the circle. basketball right you watch basketball and it's like these sports and you're like oh my god kevin durant lebron james who's gonna win there's this drama but then you take a step from mm-hmm. it and you're like wait a minute there's there's a lot more to life than just this game 
the real consequences. Yeah. And it's neat to see that in this fictional world because I think a lot of times in the fictional world it's like, oh, how do we make this get even bigger? Oh, let's add more villains yeah. or let's make someone who's like in DC, for example, it's like a lot of their villains are just super OP and you're like, just because the monster's yeah. bigger, uglier, louder doesn't mean that the stakes are bigger, you know? There's an emotional yeah. stakes now with time. Yeah, I think, um, I don't know, yeah, I think uh, the shift in circumstances, the shift in context can, like, completely change the uh, the the stakes in a show. Yeah. So I think uh, this whole time thing, pretty nifty. If, so I'm excited to see what if happens. If you have one prediction about what's going to happen between Loki and this variant, what is it? Uh, less of a prediction and more of a hope. Okay. Uh, I kind of hope that uh, the Lady Loki does not just get... I hope they, I hope they get to stick as a character and exist in the universe because that's just fucking cool to me. My prediction is that, like I said earlier, I think... She knows something about the timekeepers, about the TVA world, that they don't want us to know, the audience. And I'm thinking that Loki <clears throat> will end up being, quote unquote, good Loki. And oh, shit. I th think they want us to think that he's going to become a TVA agent or work in that world. But imagine Loki had an office job. Uh, like, nah. Hell no. Dude. Don't want it. But I nah, feel like that's nah. what they want us to think, that he's going to go that route. Not going to happen. And he's a mischievous no. little fellow. So uh, my hope, like you, as you said, Indeed. that she gets used. She, I mean, she had like, what, five scenes and or lines. And like, I was just like, yeah, oh, I want more of that. Give me more of that. Exactly. And this exactly. has been the most successful Disney Plus streaming debut so far, which I oh am my just. God. That's saying a lot. Yeah, I'm really stoked because I as a big time guy and space guy, a lot of times when I have these conversations with people, it feels like not that I'm talking over their head, but it just kind of seems like there gets, there's a threshold where people kind of just like, this is too theoretical for me and not practical and realistic enough. And I'm really excited that people are excited for this expansion world. And we say it all the time. It's like, you know, we're no longer in the world of the big names, Iron Man and Wolverine and Superman. Yeah, right. Now we're getting <clears throat> to these quote unquote original characters that we're getting to learn to love for the first time. And it's and it's really fun. Yeah. So yeah, dive into these side characters and flush them out a little bit more. So a lot of fun stuff to come, I will say. And uh, I can't wait to find out that Luna is a timekeeper <laughs> in the end. All right. Yeah, I know. There's definitely going to be some element with Samuel Jackson's cat. Like, it's just going to randomly show up sometime in the timeline. Oh I, well, actually, one real quick thing. I hope that we get some silly little cameos throughout the show as we start agreed, to... Agreed. We didn't really talk too much about the time bomb, but there was some, like, cool little thing like, oh... Asgard is off of the realm and Earth is off the realm and yeah one of the one of the names in that like little indicator yeah. was Voromir yes. which is the place where Scarlett Johansson dies and yeah. or where Black Widow has to get sacrificed for the Soul Stone yeah. so uh, the timeline I think the time said there is like a hundred years after it happened so don't get your hopes up but it was an interesting easter egg okay yeah but i am interested just to see the easter eggs because i think if there was ever a time to do a little fun thing where i don't know bucky shows up randomly or captain captain i say captain xavier professor xavier or whoever <laughs> <laughs> like those little like silly moments like that i i think loki is perfect for it like it feels a lot of times everything I think even Mobius says he's like, Loki, everything you say is kind of funny, even, like even like unintentionally or something like along the lines of that. <laughs> and it's true. Like everything he does say, you always kind of have like, is this guy serious? Because he goes, I don't want to talk. I don't like to talk. And he's like, what are you talking about, man? You oh, love so talking. He's like, he's like, you haven't stopped yeah. talking. Since yeah, yeah. The Their dynamic, dude, please, for the love of God. Please don't split these two up. I love them in the same scenes together. So they've been good. Um, I do think um, we can wrap this up. But I, my last thing is I do think the little 
you're just a bad guy trying to trick me. No, I'm not. Yeah. I'm yeah. Uh, on your team. I think that was running its course. So oh, I'm yeah. excited to no, see what the sure. dynamic looks like once they reunite. Yeah, I want them so, to have that's how I'll end up. a real relationship. And I want Mobius to start questioning potentially what's going on. And it would be interesting because it's kind of like the Jester or the Joker becoming the teacher. Which, again, I think Ooh, that's what he yeah. originally said. He's like, I think Loki can teach us something. So... I think once we watch this entire series and we go back, we'll be like, oh, my God. And they were hiding everything right in plain sight. So, Indeed, indeed. As they all do. right. So that was some Loki predictions. Thank you for who all of you guys who stuck around. Make sure you comment below what your, some of your predictions are, what you think. Yeah. If you didn't know, we stream every Tuesday and Thursday at 730. Please join us. Subscribe, share, send to your friends. Thank you so much. We are the Circle Club. I'm Tyrone. I'm Matt. Thank you.